Hello, my name is Joshua Gilliland, and welcome to another installment of the Legal Geeks educational series. I'm the attorney blogger for Bowtie Law, and one of the two bloggers for the Legal Geeks, along with Jessica Meterson. Today, we will discuss the best evidence rule. The best evidence rule can be kind of confusing when it comes to electronically stored information, so we're going to look at a couple of examples of how this works. First, since we are talking about a code section, let's look at the federal rules of evidence. The best evidence rule is addressed under Federal Rule of Evidence 1002. The rule states an original writing, recording, or photograph is required in order to prove its contents unless these rules or a federal statute provide otherwise. Federal Rule of Evidence 1003 is profoundly important when it comes to electronically stored information because effectively when we are analyzing information from a computer whether it's from a social networking site, or a Word document, or an Excel file, it is an exact duplicate of the original file. That information has been preserved, and you are working with it in one of the great review products out there, but the forensic software used to duplicate it has, in essence, created a duplicate under Federal Rule of Evidence 1003. While there aren't cases that specifically address that, that is the argument to make if it ever comes up. So let's apply these rules. In one case, a party tried to discuss the contents of an email message without offering the email message. This was a mistake. The court found that this violated the best evidence rule in the deposition because the pro-offering party did not produce the original or duplicate emails as required by the federal rules of evidence. However, there's a caveat to this. If a party is discussing their opinions about email messages, that does not violate the best evidence rule because those deponents are not attempting to recount the contents of the email messages in their testimony. There is a big difference between the two. I would still have email messages as exhibits on hand if we were going to go down that road in a deposition. But it's very important to you know understand the difference between discussing the contents of an email message and a party's opinions about an email message. There are a lot of chat cases dealing with admissibility and specifically the best evidence rule. A lot of these cases are very creepy. They come from child solicitation cases and they are the investigating police officer who is opining and presenting evidence about what happened in the chat room. In this case, the court found that a printout of an instant message chat was admissible under Federal Rule of Evidence 1003. In another case, there was an incident with an investigating police officer storing all the chat messages that were being created in the course of the officer's investigation in a Word document. That Word document, you know, effectively a transcript, contained the screen names, the time of each message, and the contents of all the instant messages involved. The detective then testified that the pronouns accurately reflected the conversations. And in this situation, the court stated the printouts constituted originals under the best evidence rule. The best evidence rule and electronically stored information can be very confusing because, again, how do you have an original of something that's data that's floating around out there? And you don't want to be actually working with the original computer because you're then changing the metadata and you're destroying evidence. So in those situations, you need that pristine duplicate made. And that's what those forensic softwares, in essence, are doing. It's very technical, and there are others who can explain that with, than, with greater detail than I can, but that is essentially a duplicate, a pristine duplicate of the information from the computers or social media websites or cell phones or any other place where we can create and preserve electronically stored information. Thank you all for your time, and tune in to a, another upcoming recording in our educational series. Thank you all and have a great day.